This is a sagittal image of an MRI. We're looking at slices like this of a 78-year-old who is having difficulty walking, falling backwards, also has dementia. Do you know the diagnosis? This is an example of an aunt mini, a distinctive radiologic finding that makes the diagnosis immediately obvious. Can you pass this neuroradiology aunt mini quiz? I'm going to give the answers in the second half of the video. Feel free to pause at any time to look at the images because we're going to go rapid fire and let me know how you did in the comments below. We have a 25 year old woman with vision loss. What is this lesion? And bonus points if you can name the classic exam findings and syndrome which may be occurring. This is the MRI of a 12 year old boy with progressive slurred speech, tremor, and abnormal movements. This next one is a 19 month old with hydrocephalus in a cranial bruit. In other words, placing a stethoscope on the back of the scalp reveals an abnormal sound. On the left is the MRI, sagittal MRI, and on the right, you can see a catheter angiogram. For this one, the only clue I'll give you is headache. This is a swan sequence of MRI of someone with memory loss. If you're not familiar with that sequence, gradient echo or GRE would show similar findings. What are these low intensity dark circles and what is the diagnosis? This individual has headache and left-sided numbness. This is a gradient echo sequence. What is this very distinctive lesion? Here is a spine MRI of a 50-year-old man with progressive leg weakness. We're looking at sagittal images through the spine. Just to orient you, this is the conus medullaris, the end of the spinal cord. Next is a 23-year-old man with left-sided numbness. These are T2 sequences of the MRI. This is a coronal view on the left and an axial view on the right. Of note, he has a history of lymphoma as a child, but in remission for more than 10 years. Right-sided weakness and speech difficulty. This is a coronal image of a CAT scan. No contrast dye was given. We have a 60-year-old man with uncontrolled movements on the right side of the body. This is an axial T1 image of an MRI. No gadolinium contrast dye was given. Of note, blood glucose was 438 and hemoglobin A1C was elevated at 9.2%. 47-year-old woman with two years of difficulty speaking and weakness of the limbs. Of note, her father had a similar condition. These are axial images of a CAT scan without contrast dye. It doesn't take eagle eyes to see the abnormalities, but what is the diagnosis? 21-year-old woman with vision loss. This is a sagittal image of a T1 MRI. No contrast dye was given. 35-year-old woman on oral contraceptives with headache. 45-year-old Chinese man with stroke. On the left, we have a catheter angiogram. On the right, an MR angiogram with reconstructions. Bonus points if you can name the two different findings shown by the arrows in these images. 70-year-old woman with lightheadedness and memory loss. On the left, we see a zoomed-in image of an axial slice of an MRI focused on the pons. On the right side, we see a zoomed-in image of a sagittal MRI. The more distinctive finding is shown by the arrow on the left. And now the case that stumps neurology residents every single time. An 80-year-old man with a history of psychiatric illness. So now we'll move to the answers, but please pause and write your answers in the comments below and your level of education and training and background. I'd be interested to know. There's no shame in getting these wrong unless perhaps you're an actual neuroradiologist. By the way, I also have sources of many of these images if you want to read more about them in the notes below. This was the 78-year-old with walking difficulty. Here you can see the hummingbird sign. The midbrain is shrunken, atrophic compared to the normal pons, giving the appearance of a hummingbird. You can see the beak and the tail here consistent with PSP, progressive supranuclear palsy, a form of Parkinsonism. On the same film, you can see some atrophy of the corpus callosum, not necessarily associated with this condition. This is the 25-year-old woman with a large mass. Here, if you look closely, you can see it's coming from the outside of the brain attached to the meninges with a dural tail, an extension of the dura. This is consistent with a meningioma, often Often a benign tumor, though it can cause problems when it's very large, and in this location attached to the sphenoid bone called a sphenoid wing meningioma, it can often press on the optic nerve and cause 
optic atrophy and visual loss on examination when it's very large it can increase intracranial pressure and actually push indirectly on the contralateral optic nerve causing the finding of papilledema or swelling of the optic nerve this is known as foster kennedy syndrome i've seen it exactly once in my career this is the 12 year old boy with the progressive neurological disease if you look at the internal capsule you can see a low intensity area with a central bright spot this so-called eye of the tiger sign is found in pecan pantothenic kinase associated neurodegeneration a rare genetic disease but note that on t3 and 7 tesla mris this can actually appear similar as a normal variant so be careful in over interpreting this this cat scan done on someone with headache shows star sign this bright signal this high attenuation area is blood in the supracellar cistern generally from a ruptured brain aneurysm you can also see some blood in the quadrigeminal cistern there's also enlargement of the temporal horns of the lateral ventricles consistent with secondary hydrocephalus this mri for memory loss shows tiny areas of old micro hemorrhages each little dot you see is old blood this is consistent with cerebral amyloid angiopathy very closely related to alzheimer's disease where amyloid plaques get in the neurons of the brain they can also invade the blood vessels and cause bleeding, sometimes leading to clinical syndromes or sometimes being completely clinically silent. This MRI done for headache and left-sided numbness shows a so-called popcorn lesion consistent with a cavernous malformation, a brain malformation that can bleed and cause symptoms but can often be clinically silent and many people have them and don't even know it. This is the spine MRI of a 50-year-old man with progressive leg weakness. Posterior to the spine, you see these small dark dots consistent with blood vessels. This is a radiculomedullary arteriovenous fistula, an abnormal connection between the veins and arteries that can lead to stroke of the spine. In fact, there may be some bright signal representing edema or infarct of the spinal cord. Difficult to tell on this particular scan. This lesion can be treated with a cath catheter embolization resolving the fistula, though it's quite risky. This is the 23-year-old man with left-sided numbness who has this lesion that has the appearance of an onion with affected and spared areas. This appearance, onion skinning, is consistent with Baylow's concentric sclerosis, a rare form of multiple sclerosis, an inflammatory disease of the brain that can potentially be treated with immunosuppressants. It has no known association with prior lymphoma, which is likely a red herring. This CAT scan done for right-sided weakness and speech difficulty shows high attenuation in the area of the left middle cerebral artery. This is known as a dense left MCA sign representing clot from an acute stroke blocking the x-rays. You can see the terminal internal carotid artery also appears dense because there's also a dense ICA sign, in other words, a clot in the terminal internal carotid artery. This is the MRI of the 60-year-old man with uncontrolled movements on the right side. In the left putamen, you can see this bright T1 signal consistent with a disease caused by elevated blood sugars, non-ketotic hyperglycemia with hemichoria and hemibilismus. In other words, abnormal movements on the contralateral or or other side of the body due to very elevated blood sugars causing toxicity. In my experience, this disease occurs more commonly in people with very, very elevated blood sugar, like over 500 blood glucose and hemoglobin A1C around 14 and 15. To me, this 9.2% value is quite low for this condition. I also note that bright T1 lesions in the basal ganglia can occur in some other disorders such as carbon and monoxide poisoning or manganese toxicity in certain minors. This is the 47-year-old woman with a progressive movement disorder who has brain calcifications. This is Farr's disease, a genetic condition as noted by her family history. I note that a similar condition called Farr's syndrome can occur with altered calcium metabolism as in hyperparathyroidism. I've actually seen both forms of this.
This CAT scan done on a 35-year-old woman with headaches shows a gap in the posterior aspect of the superior sagittal sinus. This represents a clot, the so-called empty delta sign, consistent with dural venous thrombosis, in other words, a clot in one of the veins of the brain, a rare but known side effect of estrogen products, including oral contraceptives. The progesterone-only formulations are not thought to increase the risk of this rare condition. Condition. These images of the 45-year-old man with a stroke show two findings. On the right, we see narrowing or stenosis of the internal carotid arteries. On the left, we see many small collateral blood vessels known as a puff of smoke, which are occurring secondary to the internal carotid artery stenosis. This is known as Moya Moya disease, presumably given this man's young age and the fact that he's Chinese, the ethnicity where this disease is more common, we presume this is the genetic variant, Moya Moya disease. Sometimes a similar finding can occur with atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, that more typically occurs in older individuals with vascular risk factors like diabetes, hypertension, and smoking, and it is referred to as Moya Moya syndrome and is usually asymmetrical. These MRI scans of a 70-year-old woman with lightheadedness and memory loss show a cross in the pons. This is known as a hot cross bun sign, consistent with multi-system atrophy. It's caused by loss of myelinated fibers in the pons, and this disease can cause dysfunction of the autonomic system, leading to low blood pressure and symptoms such as lightheadedness. On the right side of the image, you see atrophy of the cerebellum, which can also occur in multi-system atrophy and other diseases as well. Now, if you couldn't get this last one, don't fault yourself because there isn't any disease that that's gonna cause these unusual strange areas of gliosis in the bilateral frontal lobe so symmetrical. This is actually caused by that one crazy species, humans, who used to do terrible things to treat psychiatric disease, including frontal lobotomy, which did work in treating agitation, but led to terrible personality changes, mood changes, and dementia, and often progressive symptoms down the line. So that takes us to the end of the Neuroradiology Ant Mini Quiz. I hope you enjoyed it. And again, let me know how you did in the comments below, or if you have any other questions or suggestions for other videos. Don't be hard on yourself if you couldn't get them right, because they're very difficult unless you have a lot of neuroradiology experience, but hopefully you learned something in this video and have a good day.